As we welcome you to the NCAA Softball Super Regionals presented by Capital One. Game one to the Sooners last night, game two to the Crimson Tide this afternoon. And the winner of our game three this evening will face Michigan at the Women's College World Series on opening day on Thursday. And welcome back to the Rhodes House, where we will, in fact, play two after the Crimson Tide picked up the win earlier today. Beth Mowens, Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza. we got to talk about the two freshmen in the circle. So far, they have owned the veteran hitters today. They have been outstanding, and in really clutch situations, pressure situations, where you don't always think the freshmen are going to step up, but they have. Paige Parker, game one against Marissa Runyon, the home run hitter for Alabama. Bases loaded, 3-2 count, the changeup, strike three to end the game just outstanding but Lexi Osorio has been amazing in the circle as well Lauren Chamberlain bases loaded she takes her up the ladder strikes her out in fact that's the first time all year that Lauren Chamberlain has struck out with the bases loaded and we're we're talking about two of the top hitting teams in the country certainly four hitters in particular McClenney and Chamberlain have home runs but otherwise they've been pretty quiet these are the stars when you come into this series besides the pitching you're thinking about who are the big hitters hitters and these big hitters have struggled the, this far we talk about the two home runs you mentioned Beth but they are combined two for 22 but like any great hitter you're just waiting for that moment for them to break out and I think this is the game we see the big ones do well seven strikeouts combined for the big hitters on both sides and for the third game in a row it will be Alexis Cesario against Paige Parker Lexi with 14 strikeouts in the last two games. She is coming off the one-hit shutout about an hour ago. And they will continue to ride the arm of the youngster from Riverside, California. And she will throw the ball in that mid-60 range where you have a lot of movement. Great rise curve to both sides of the plate. She has a very good changeup as well. She focuses on spin and movement. And when she pitches from ahead, she's tough to beat. Lauren Chamberlain in the leadoff spot. Hit a home run off of Osorio in game one. Struck out with the bases loaded in the fifth inning in game two. And then Pendley right behind her, but right behind her, Jess, is looking for her first hit of this series. Well, and she's going to need to because otherwise they're going to try to still continue to pitch up in the zone to Chamberlain, risk the walk until they know that Penley is going to step up behind her. That is your Capital One starting lineup for the Oklahoma Sooners. They need a win here to get back to the Women's College World Series for the fifth year in a row and an opportunity to play for their third national championship for Alabama. A tenth trip to the World Series. They are the first SEC team to win it all in 2012 when they beat Oklahoma in a game three. Chamberlain, the career... Home run queen in college softball, 93 home runs. Broke the record of Stacy Newman a month ago. Yeah, in the dirt. 2-0. and oh. Rosario in the game yesterday, 124 pitches. And then this afternoon, 123 pitches. For the youngster. Three and zero to Chamberlain. This, by the way, is the first time for both Osorio and Parker that they will be pitching double headers in the same day. to the number one draft choice in the NPF draft. She'll walk and coming up right behind her, the number two overall draft pick in the NPF. Lead off walk to Chamberlain.
the catch to keep it in the park. This is the best part about home field advantage because you know where you're at in the park. Shelby Penley gets a great swing hitting this high and up. And look where McKellen, McClenney knows where the wall is, makes a beautiful jump. That's a home run that she took away. That was a 2-0 sooner lead. Instead, one down with one on. For the All-American out in center field. This is Aaron Miller. Dropping down a beautiful bunt. And I love the way she reads the defense, noticing that Alabama is back. She dumps down the first good pitch she sees. It's all about reading what the game is giving it and then taking advantage of it. Katie Self. Some changes in the batting order for Oklahoma. Moving around the middle of their lineup. So Self, who... Hit in the sixth spot earlier. We'll move up to the four spot. The base hit for Oklahoma. They only had one this afternoon. It took them five innings in game one to get their first hit. Looking for some success against the freshman Osorio. Shallow center, and back to make the catch, Danae Hayes, two down. Sooners now in the series, one for eight with a runner in scoring position. They've picked up one RBI. Lauren Chamberlain after the walk down at second, Aaron Miller the single at first. And it's the pitcher, Paige Parker. Osorio, the SEC Freshman of the Year, and along with Parker and Jenna Lilly at Oregon, the three finalists for Freshman of the Year that will be announced next week at the World Series. It may just come down to the game today to decide who will take home that award. Lilly's had a terrific season at uh, the University of Oregon at third base. It's hard to argue against the fact that these two freshmen though clearly the biggest role players on their team as freshmen Parker may get the nod because she's also a hitter and here she is with a 3-0 count and the Sooners looking to load them up here in the first Remember, we have a different home plate umpire. The umpires switch because of the different games, so you have to work with a different strike zone. You may have gotten that call just 45 minutes ago, but now it's, it's a different person. Chauncey Bell having a word with Sally Keller. Mike Bartling at first, Chad Steers at third. And it is ball four. 12 strike, excuse me, 12 pitches this inning, just three strikes thrown by Soria. Murphy out to talk with Keller. Two walks in the inning. Osorio only had three the entire game this afternoon. And now Murphy out to talk with his uh, freshman pitcher. The 2012 national champs. Murphy trying to get uh, the Crimson Tide to the World Series for the 10th time playing in their 16th straight NCAA tournament. 
four teams have advanced to the World Series, all of them home teams. So the higher seed home teams are 4-0 so far in the Supers. And it's the veteran Georgia Casey, the senior from Australia, 0 for 5 so far in the Super Regional. from the Tide Faithful. And welcome to game three. Here's the 0-1. Casey on the season batting 750 with the bases loaded. Down in an 0-2 hole. McClenny on the run, makes the diving catch. Two spectacular plays from the All-American center fielder. It doesn't get any better in the outfield and calling softball than Haley McClenny with a diving catch to end the inning with the bases loaded. defensive plays out in center field. Haley McClenney just saved four runs for Alabama. She is the number two batter in the lineup to face Paige Parker, the freshman from Independence, Missouri, throwing for the first time this year. Back-to-back -back starts on the same day. She got the win in game one, took the loss this afternoon. And now ready to go, trying to keep Oklahoma alive in the tournament. And how do you throw when you're facing a team three consecutive games in a row you mix it up and she does that so well with her rise her curve her off speed and that lefty matchup against the four lefties in Alabama's lineup is key 14 innings has allowed just seven hits and the Capital One starting lineup for the Crimson Tide the struggling Marissa Runyon their number four hitter their top home run hitter down to the seven spot in the order yeah, 18 home runs on the year but just his not been able to gather herself in this super regional against Paige Parker. You would think with that matchup, lefty righty, lefty lefty, that she would be able to do a little bit more, but she has been dropped down. 0 for 7 is running so far in the supers. It's Turner, McClenney, and Spencer to start things off. The trio at the top responsible for all four of their runs through the first two games. Spencer, the decisive two-run home run that was the difference in game two today. Turner has the fifth best batting average for a freshman in the country. And leads Alabama in hits. 0-1 from Parker. Chopped to Penley, can't get it out of her glove cleanly. see her offense but first how about her defense oh she saved four runs just in the top of the first she goes up and robs this home run over the fence knowing where she's at and this would have dropped in for a single she leaves her feet full length dive look at the emotion that McClenney brings leading this team would have been a two run home run would have been at least a two run single with the bases loaded and now McClenney who hit a home run in game one all five of her NCAA tournament hits are home runs. <laughs> Water covers three quarters. McClenney takes care of the rest. That's what we saw in the top of the inning. McClenney gets around on the inside pitch out into the bullpen. Fifth best on base percentage in the country. She will threaten the career marks in the SEC for both on base and batting average before her career is over. Pop 
picked it up. Chamberlain sporting the shades here to start out to game two with a smattering of sunshine through the trees. Jaden Spencer will step in. Jaden has reached safely in six of her seven plate appearances. Had the two-run home run earlier today, and in game one had an RBI double. Walked a couple of times, got hit by a pitch. And I love the changes that Pat Murphy implemented in his batting lineup. We talked about moving Marissa Runyon down. Runyon, the lefty, moves well down so he can have four righty hitters in a row. Spencer, Bell, Lafayette, and Hayes. Four righties in a row to go up against the lefty and Paige Parker. Spencer. Jaden, the senior from Waterloo, Iowa. He's taking on the 3 0 pitch. And that last pitch, Spencer, once she got in the batter's box, moved herself actually up. Now she's going to go to the back. So she's moving all over. And you see Whitney Ellis having to adjust because Spencer was already all the way in the front of the box. Spencer fouls it off, full count. The senior class, they were freshmen when they won the national championship. Trying to bookend it with another title. For these two senior classes, may be the last time in their respective school uniforms. Spencer goes down. runner at first. Demi Turner did not think that would get caught. And it was a hit and run, but a great catch by Oklahoma to get out of it. On to the World Series and a date with Michigan on Thursday. The 2005 national champion Wolverines have won 25 in a row. Heading back to Oklahoma City along with Tennessee, Auburn, and Oregon. Your teams that have already advanced. We'll add another one here from Tuscaloosa and then the last three spots tomorrow. Tori Nershall, 7, 8, and 9 in the order. Nershall, the DP, was 0 for 2 with a walk in game two this afternoon. Osorio starts her off with the strike. The first pitch strikes for Osorio were big in that game two win for her. Four of the first seven she has faced so far here have been strikes. Tori Nershall is a former Big East Rookie of the Year at Pittsburgh and transferred to Oklahoma, originally out of Carlsbad, California. pitches don't seem to have the same bite sometimes when you throw a game earlier and you have a longer layoff 45 minutes versus 15 to 30 minutes you can get a little bit tight important for her to try and figure out those release points and work from ahead three and one Little walks from Osorio in the first inning. Pat Murphy had a discussion with the home plate umpire, and I didn't like the strike zone. 
Well, it was a big part of Osorio's game. She was getting the high strike called by Chad Steers, who was behind the plate. Now Sally Keller, a smaller zone. Three one, and that was huge for her. And it'll be interesting to see how Osorio adjusts. She got the the strikeout of Chamberlain because she had the high strike being called. So Chamberlain had to go after the rise ball. Three one now goes to the three two. And the rise ball over the bat of Marshall. One down. First strikeout for Osorio. So even though Osorio works from behind for most of the at-bat, she locates this pitch very well in the river. Great late sharp movement. Nurschel just swings right through it. This is the catcher, Whitney Ellis. We saw with the strikeout with Nurschel and now with Ellis. She gets back into the box as Oklahoma's adjustment to Osorio on that rise ball is to get right up in the front of the box, try to get the rise ball before it climbs. Ellis hit in game one. She went 0 for 3, did not hit in game two. The inside part of the plate, one and one. And curve ball coming right in at her. was the motto for their 2012 national championship team, finish it. Doesn't hurt to bring that kind of karma back around if you're a Tide fan. Two pitch. Fouls off a rise ball. There's the new motto this year, grit. They're all wearing in those arm bands. Ellis fouls another one off. Huge crowd tonight. Close to 4,000 strong, sticking around for the doubleheader. Last home game of the season, regardless of the outcome. One, two to Ellis. Missed it away. And Bell will have a word of encouragement. Already seeing the pace change a little bit here for Osorio at her third start in 24 hours. Trying to keep that focus. Off speed, 2-2 two -two pitch out to Spencer. Two down. Callie Parsons, the number nine hitter. 500, though, so far in this tournament. She's two for four. She had their only hit in game two. And her single in the sixth inning broke up a no-hitter in game one. The pitching so far for both sides has been the story of this Super Regional. I think the biggest advantage that Callie Parsons has had and why she's had the most success against Osorio is the fact that she's a slapper that looks for the ball down. And She's not chasing the up pitch. She's waiting for something she can hit up the middle. And she reaches the ball at the front part of the plate, so she's trying to get it before the break. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're starting to see Oklahoma try to move to the front part of the box, just to make adjustments to try to catch the ball before it breaks. I know when I was pitching, it was always harder for me to strike out batters when they were in the front of the box and when they were in the back of the box. see Parsons, the slapper, get that running start. 
try and close the distance even more with the pitcher's release. Yeah, I think the other thing that's been interesting about this series is as good as the pitchers have been in the circle, the defense behind them has just been outstanding. I mean, that's what I love to see when you have that pitching duel and the defense steps up. Yeah, just the two errors in two games. Infield pop up to Hayes at short. Three up, three down. To the Sun setting here in Tuscaloosa, the Bryce Building on the University of Alabama campus. We are scoreless, bottom of the second. Winner of this one goes on to the Women's College World Series. It has been a super regional dominated by the two freshman pitchers so far. And they've been outstanding. Osorio with the nine base on balls. I always look at those free passes. Parker with just six. But the key for Osorio is that she's more of a power pitcher. 15 strikeouts to help work herself out of jams. But both these young ladies throwing their hearts out. The question will be, how long can they go? They've both thrown a lot of innings and a lot of pitches these last 24 hours. Parker on your left got the win with a huge strikeout, a 3-2 changeup with the bases loaded of Marissa Runyon to preserve the win uh, yesterday. And then earlier today, Osorio with a bases loaded strikeout in the fifth inning of Lauren Chamberlain to end the Sooners' biggest threat. And win game two, four, five, and six for Alabama. Bell, Lafayette, and Hayes. Chauncey so far, one for five at the Supers. Alabama has scored four runs in the two games, a couple of home runs, McClenney and Runyon. And for the Oklahoma Sooners, one big inning, a five run sixth inning in game one. The only time they've been able to tee off on Osorio. Shallow center, Casey has it, one down. Little Lafayette coming up. Oklahoma trying to become uh, the lone Big 12 representative at the World Series for Alabama. Looking to join SEC sisters Auburn and Tennessee. Rafaele grunts and muscles it out of play. Half the field of the Super Southeastern Conference teams. Florida and LSU, one win away from advancing to the World Series as well. No one to Lafayette. Leona's looking for her first hit of the Super. She's 0 for 6 so far. up for a strike, one and two. strategy and positioning for the righties of Alabama in last game. Look at Shelby Penley, the shortstop. She's playing all the way over to third. Huge gap between her and second base. Rafaele trying to go down the right field line. They did the same shift for Chauncey Bell and Jaden Spencer, pole hitters trying to force them to go the other way. And then if they do throw inside, they're expecting it to be towards that 5-6 hole. Melissa Lombardi, the uh, pitching coach, sending the signals out to the catcher. Whitney Ellis and out to Parker in the circle. Lafaele right at Penley where she was shifted. Good preparation by Oklahoma. 
to have their shortstop right there. You know, and Penley's got the range. She can go to that 5-6 hole, but why not make it easy? I mean, she is standing in this hole. Otherwise, could have been a possible base hit. Look how easy it is. She has time. She takes two steps, gets her feet set. Normally, she might have had to backhand and throw off her back foot. Two down for Danae Hayes. The lone starter still around from the championship team. Started at second base. And then later in her career, moved over to short. Today has added more power to her game as she's uh, gotten older. Just seven home runs in her first two years, and now seven last year and seven more this year. Next inning, by the way, Lauren Chamberlain is set to lead off for Oklahoma. Her way swung away. Lauren, the two run home run in game one. That's her only hit so far of the series. Number 93 in her career. Just giving chase. If it made contact with the net first, it's a dead ball. If not, it's an out. Yeah, and you can see that it does actually look like it hits off the back of the net. And they are going to stick with the initial call. When we come back, the Oklahoma Sooners, how many more chances will you get to see Lauren? As far as hitting goes, um, just a dominant presence, um, a scary hitter. I want to make pitchers feel uncomfortable, and I want to make my teammates feel comfortable when I'm, when I'm up to the plate. Um, as far as with relationships goes with my teammates and my coaches, um, I just want to be known that I played the game the right way and that I played it hard and with passion. I believe strongly that if you don't play this game with passion, it's a waste of time. And it's a big, great outlet for girls to, you know, feel beautiful on the field and feel positive about themselves and, and just strong and confident. Um, and also, I hope that I helped someone along the way. Well, that's the legacy Lauren wanted to leave, and I think mission accomplished. Now all that's left is to write the, uh, the last chapter. Her home runs over the years to become the new NCAA record holder. She's got one national championship. Can she add one more? This may be her final game if the Sooners bow out. Top of the third and top of the order to face Lexi Osorio. Senior from Tribuco Canyon, California, when she arrived, she said, my only goal was I wanted to start. <laughs> I just love the perspective that she has. I mean, she's a, a young player, and she understands that it, it's more than herself. Mentioning young girls watching and the example of confidence that she carries. We can talk mechanics all day long, but she is one of the most confident hitters I have ever seen. And that's why she's successful. Grew up in Southern California watching the likes of Stacy Newman and Crystal Bustos. Two U.S. Olympians. And I think the thing that I respect the most about her is obviously she's talented, but she works very hard. She studies. She knew as a freshman her swing was long. She worked very hard with Trip McKay to shorten her swing up. And look what she's done. She set an NCAA record for home runs. Yeah. 
That's the pitch Osorio got her to strike out on with the bases loaded in the last game, and Lauren does not go there. Osorio just does a nice job of mixing location and speeds, and that's all you can do against a great hitter that has no weakness. You know she's going to adjust, and you adjust with her. Penley. Swings away at the first pitch. Another high fly ball to Turner, two outs. Gosh, Beth, the bat speed of Shelby Penley. I know that's a pop-up in the books to second base, but she hit that so high. If she had just gotten a little more even with this swing, it would have been out. But you see that bat path and, and the bat speed that she has, just incredible. And you see a little bit of the frustration there as she pounds the helmet holder. With two outs, it's Aaron Miller singled in the first. As we get deeper into the evening for these seniors, how will they handle as the pressure starts to build to try and keep their careers alive? And who will stay composed in the big moments? And can the freshmen continue to rule the day? Osorio and Parker certainly looks like it right now. Two. Lexi's misses are starting to get a little bit larger now. I think part of that is due to the number of pitches that she's thrown. To be getting a little tired. Smacked out into center and a base hit for Miller. She's got both of them for the Sooners tonight. making some noise now here in Tuscaloosa. Katie Self will step in. Hit a two-run home run with two outs in the sixth inning of game one. Does not have a hit since. This is where you can tell that Lexi's a little tired because that curveball's missing off the plate by a good foot. You could just see when she's fresh, that pitch is a little bit tighter, a little more violent. 290 pitches in the series in the last 24 hours. 1 0 to self. We talk to coaches this time of the year, it's that clutch hit. Or is it that one mistake that a pitcher leaves too far out over the white of the plate? A series that looked like it might be high scoring has not played out that way. Change up. One and two. That will be the most important pitch to her as this game goes on, as she continues to tire. Yeah. 
fouls it off. So that's the junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Patty Gasso likes her in the lineup, says she's one of our toughest outs. The hit and run on. And the reason why she's a tough out is she's one of the toughest two strike hitters in the conference. Patty Gasso said when she gets two strikes, she's able to just shorten up and battle. That's what she's doing right now. She's hit two balls that are actually out of the zone and fouled them off. Keep this at bat rolling. Missed it, two and two. Sorio getting a little more deliberate too, taking her time to the back of the circle, collecting herself. on softball pitching as well as softball snapshots from around the country on ESPNW.com. sure you'll also be able to see the replays of the two spectacular catches from Haley McClenney in the first inning. The difference right now in the game, she saved four runs for Alabama. She pulled a two-run home run back into the yard and then a diving catch out in center field with the bases loaded that saved a couple more. And we are scoreless. Three combined hits as we head to the bottom of the third. Paige Parker set to go again. Seven, eight, and nine. Marissa Runyon, who dropped down from the four spot in the order. Can Runyon find a breakout moment? She's 0 for 7 after absolutely tearing the cover off the ball the last two months of the regular season. She's four RBI shy of the single season school record held by Charlotte Morgan. And I think part of why Pat Murphy moves her down, not just that she's struggling, but also takes the pressure off. When you're in that four hole, you feel the pressure of the world. You have to be the RBI producer. You move down to seven, no one's paying attention. She had a big home run in the Super Regionals last year for Alabama. And they beat Nebraska. They are trying to match what they did in 2011 when they lost game one at home to Stanford and then came back and swept a double header in a single day to advance to the World Series. Three and one. home runs on the season for the sophomore from Myrtle Beach she's that free swinger not only does she lead the team in home runs she leads them in strikeouts the reason is she likes to get her hacks in chase pitches out of the zone sometimes she hits them out sometimes she misses big The 
scores up in the upper right hand corner of your screen. The other game going on Missouri has gone up on UCLA 4 to 1 out in Westwood. That could make a big SEC postseason even bigger. Runyon pops it up. Penley on the grass. One down. You have not noticed for one second the injury to Shelby Penley, the ankle that she hurt here in practice on Thursday, has been a trooper defensively. Made some sparkling plays at short. Has it affected her at the plate? It's been hard to hit for everybody off of these two rookie pitchers. Case the lefty left fielder. Former high school All America following in the footsteps of her mom Connie, who was a college softball player. Part of why we see these freshman pitchers pitch so freely. I mean, they they both just look so comfortable, even when the pressure is packed. It's because of that defense. They know they have a team behind them. Absolutely, Jess. And I think the other thing too is that as the season has progressed, both of them have really good offenses that put a lot of runs up on the board. So you can make a mistake. You don't have to pitch scared like you have to pitch shutouts. Although they have to in this. <laughs> and this Super Regionals, it feels like. But, I mean, having an offensive support makes a huge difference. Two-two from Parker. She has maintain the same countenance on her face throughout this Super Regional. Hasn't let much phase her. Close to 260 pitches in the Supers for Page. You start to think about Arizona State freshman sensation Dallas Escobedo in 2011. The only rookie in 20 years to be the ace all season and get her team to the World Series and win it all. Parker gets the strikeout. Can one of these two youngsters do the same thing? Parker runs this curveball away from Case. Actually, it looks like she pulled that in, had a little bit of up, but it looked like it was a little bit of back door too, so. First strikeout for Perker, two down, it's Danny Richard. Richard's numbers on the years. Did Pete Perker just come up with a newfangled pitch right there, that rise curve? Lefties, he's got that weird. You lefties, yeah. you can you can work that magic. <laughs> you call it magic. <laughs> <laughs> you call it wizardry, Mendoza. Yeah, it's a little crazy. <laughs> that, was, that was a crazy pitch. Sounds like there's personal experience behind that commentary. <laughs> Beth Bowens and the Olympic gold medalist Jessica Mendoza, Michelle Smith. We've got three gold medals, don't we? <laughs> Richard couldn't hold up on it, two and two. You could borrow one of Michelle's. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to work real hard, but you two did. Here's the two-two pitch. Another strikeout for Parker. She continues to match Osorio, K for K. Scoreless as we go to the fourth, Pat Murphy on the other side. Lexi Osorio has thrown almost 300 pitches in this series. How much longer can she go? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, 
four more innings. <laughs> um, I mean, both kids are extremely gutsy, and this is one of the reasons why we've been pushing for a three-day Super Regional, you know, one game a day, just like baseball does. Um, I know our fans would be here tomorrow. I know you guys would be here tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, we need to get that done. It should be a, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, Coach, with, with the entire season on the line right now, grit has been a theme this entire year. But what do you sense from your team right now? Well, we did a, uh, the old uh, feet in the ice bath in between games and, uh, you know, for about 30 seconds, hopefully rejuvenate them a little bit. But I think everybody's good to go. We just need to get that key hit because I think both pitchers are throwing well, defense are playing well, but it's going to come down to the third thing in um, postseason softball, who gets the key hit. All right, well, thank you very thanks, much, Pat. Thanks for staying with us, too. <laughs> Those hits of have been course. Where hard, else to, we go? hard to come by. Just three combined here tonight. They only combined for three hits in their game this afternoon and just the nine hits in game one. And it's the pitcher, Paige Parker, to lead things off. Five, six, and seven. Winner will face Michigan on Thursday at the Women's College World Series. Eight teams to Oklahoma City. It has been ten years now into our 11th season since the Michigan Wolverines beat UCLA in the first ever championship series in 2005 the famous Samantha Finley home run in game three. Bruins, by the way, have come back to tie it up 4-4 four, four with Mizzou. And perhaps the most famous of the championship series was the matchup between these two teams in 2012 when Alabama went dancing in the rain in game three and made the comeback to win the championship. Jackie Trainer with the strikeout of Kehlani Ricketts with a one-run lead in the bottom of the seventh inning to win it, the first SEC national championship. As Lexi Osorio now hits the 300 pitch mark Two hits for Oklahoma. And now the third walk of the game. As a Sooner leadoff on board with the Women's College World Series was returning to Oklahoma City on Thursday, May 28th. We got a, four games for you on that Thursday starting at noon Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the World Series, go to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Second time the leadoff has been on base with a walk, and it's Kelsey Arnold on to pinch run. Parker can re-enter. Georgie Casey, 0 for 1 with the fly out to center field and the spectacular diving catch with the bases loaded by Haley McClenney. be interesting to see the strategy of Oklahoma here. You can tell that Lexi Osorio is tired. She is falling behind hitters. She's still been able to retire them and keep the zeros up on the board, but you can just tell she's not as sharp. Casey right now in the postseason. There is no activity in the bullpen. Sydney Littlejohn pitched two-thirds of an inning in game one last night. She's 16-1 and one on the season. Another infield pop-up. 
Casey is retired, one down, unable to advance that runner off the bag at first. Well, and this is where it comes down to productive outs. You've got to move your teammates up when they are on base, and, and Coach Murphy said it best. It's the third component of what it takes to win championships or go to championships, and that's called timely hitting. Neither one of these clubs have been able to do that yet or execute. Are we going to see short game at some point here? Was that a bunting situation perhaps for a sacrifice for Casey? I, I think so, or a bunt and run, slap and run, something. Even if it's a fake bunt, slap through and get your runner in motion. Try to put the defense and create some havoc. Get the defense in motion. Casey is the one that had the sacrifice bunt that led to another run in that sixth inning in game one. And now Tori Nershel struck out on a rise ball in the second. Arnold, that go-ahead run over at first base. Runner goes, the throw down, and Arnold in scoring position now for the Crimson Tide. And, and that's what you have to do, because if you look at your score chart, nine fly balls for Oklahoma. They are hitting the ball in the air. Of course, that's induced because of Osorio's rise ball, but you can see great jump by Arnold. This throw short. I'm surprised they haven't picked on Chauncey Bell a little bit more and pushed her to truly have to throw them out and throw the Sooners out. RBI opportunity now for Tori Nershel. They're one for nine risp in the series. Rise ball out of the zone. Two and one. Check that, two and two. Neither side has been good in these situations in the series. Two from Osorio. Change up misses. Another three ball count. And it goes full again. All the Oklahoma hitters have been consistent. Oklahoma bench. There was a problem on the scoreboard with the count. And Oklahoma claims it's ball four. say that it was a ball on the pitch when Arnold stole second base and this should be a walk and uh, Sally Keller checks down with Stad Chad Steers at third base and they both agree three and two and straight back. All the Oklahoma hitters have been consistent with being up in the batter's box. The big adjustment we've seen in game three, they were not doing that. Games one and two. As far up in front as they can go to catch that rise ball before it breaks. strikeout for Osorio. Whitney Ellis flew out to right field in the uh, second inning.
slow roller. Turner charging it second to first in time. Still scoreless. Patty Gasso on the mic when we come back. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Super Regionals, presented by Capital One to the bottom of the fourth, scoreless, the winner on to the Women's College World Series. And now Patty Gasso joins us from Oklahoma. Well, Patty, third time through now against Alexis Osorio. I noticed you guys moved up in the batter's box a little bit. What kind of adjustments are you looking for from your hitters? Again, it's just her, her spin. She's so hard to read in the way of what she's doing in the way of speed. So it's just hard to square things up. I think we're doing a better job of zoning the ball down. So we just got to stick with it. We're putting runners in scoring position. I think we've had some good swings on some balls. Um, they have a number eight who's pretty dang good herself. And she single-handedly is keeping us from scoring. So, I mean, we just got to keep, keep at it. Hey, Coach, after a tough game earlier today, what was your message to your team? Um, I think we understand we're the underdogs here and that we will leave every ounce we have, which we are right now, every ounce we have we're going to leave on this field and um, just play our guts out. That's all we can do. So play free, enjoy it, but just um, we, we need to clutch. We need to clutch it up right now. All right, well, thank you very much, Patty. Thanks, Coach. Well, the Sooners were in a three-game series last year in the Super Regionals at home against Tennessee. And they took that game three from the Lady Vols to move on to the World Series for the fourth year in a row. These are two programs that have each played for the national championship twice in the last three years. And one of them will not make it back to try again. Top of the order for Bama. One attempt popped up. Snagged by Ellis. One down, and here comes Haley McClenney. That's the other number eight that Coach Patty Gasso just referred to. Grabbed a home run ball and brought it back into the park and also had a spectacular diving catch to save a couple more runs back in that first inning. At the plate, she popped up to second. Can she continue this... Crazy stretch, three home runs in the regular season and five in her last five games. There's a rope, fair ball into the corner, McClenney for second, and she'll stay there. Haley McClenney said the key to hitting Parker was to break the spin on the curveball, to be able to get her barrel perfectly angled in front of that curveball. This is exactly what she does. Watch her barrel get in front of the curveball, not allowing it to keep breaking and moving away. She crushes this pitch for a double. And they will intentionally walk Jaden Spencer, who has three of their four RBI in this series. And this is the smart play because the four through nine batters for Alabama have been anemic at the plate. Well, and it also gives them the opportunity to have a force, potentially also turn a double play because they have a group of righties, three in a row, coming up. And it has also energized the crowd at the Roadhouse as they anticipate a big opportunity for Chauncey Bell coming up next. has waited her turn and in her first year as a starter her first time on the big stage of the super regionals has a chance to put alabama in front the next three hitters coming up bell lafayette and hayes went down in order back in the second inning They've been a combined 0 for 7.
Freshman against senior. we saw earlier, you're going to see Shelby Penley, the shortstop, pulled over in that 5-6 hole, forcing Bell to go up the middle, opposite field. Fouled into the pen. The numbers in the heart of the order for Bama, not good so far. And Bell change it with one swing. Bell looking for the base hit, and she's got it. McClenny coming home. Alabama with the lead. Bell just does a beautiful job with a pitch left up in the zone. She just gets enough of it. It's actually better that she doesn't crush it because then it drops in in front of Parsons and with the speed of McClenny sliding around Ellis at home. And I love the way McClenny read that knowing it was going to drop. She had a great jump. Big hand for Bell who Watched her sister Chanda with success at the University of Kentucky. And now a huge moment for the little sister. Driving in the first run of the game. She can re-enter. Bobo is running it first. And it all started with the Haley McClenney double. The intentional walk to Spencer. And the invitation by Oklahoma. All right, Bell, see if you can beat us. And she gets the base hit. Lafayette is hitless so far in the series. When would the offenses show up? When would the veterans? Get a grip on the freshman pitchers who have held them in check through the first two and a half games. Parker has been marvelous throughout. Getting clutch out after clutch out. Stays 0-2 to Lafayette. it away. One, two from Parker. Rafaele sends it out to left center. Catch made by Parsons and the runners will not be able to tag. Two down. We're in that righty row that you spoke of earlier, Michelle. Here comes the last one, Danae Hayes, and it's another senior. And a connection to that 2012 championship team. Danae Hayes, fly ball out to left. Self's got a beat on it. 
Side retired, a couple left on, but the Crimson Tide score first in the winner take all game three. Haley McClenney with the double and Chauncey Bell with the biggest hit of her career. Tied up, one zip. McClenney with a big hit at the plate and the two spectacular defensive plays to prevent Oklahoma from getting on the scoreboard back in the first inning. Sooners will come up with nine and then the top of the order. And could this be the last times to the plate for Lauren Chamberlain and Shelby Penley? The Sooners would need to rally. We may see him again perhaps in the seventh inning. Two of the top home run hitters in the history of the sport do up second and third with Oklahoma down a run. And also the strategy now starts to come into play if you're Pat Murphy, how are you going to throw to those two? Capable more than anybody in the nation of tying it with one mistake. Well, I think you have to go at Chamberlain. Nobody's on base because you can't afford to walk her and have Penley come up and hit a home run. So I think you have to go after him each individually, one at a time. Callie Parsons had their only hit this afternoon in the 2-0 shutout loss and also a single to break up a no-hitter in the sixth inning on Friday night. Popped up to short in the second. They had the threat in the first inning. With the bases loaded, McClenney with the huge defensive plays. Leslie Jury is warming up for Alabama, the senior righty. They had Arnold in scoring position in the last inning, could not get her in. the ball ratio off just a little bit. Typically Osorio will be two-thirds strikes, one-third balls. Two-two to Parsons. The way that they're playing Parsons, Michelle, you mentioned this last game, Demi Turner way up the middle took away a run in the last game. Both her hits have come up the middle. Reaches for it. Going to be a tough play at short for Hayes. Under time pressure with the speed of Parsons and a base runner on board for Chamberlain. E6 on Hayes. Chamberlain walked in the first, popped up in the third. Her 93rd career home run last night in their game one win. Has 15 home runs in the NCAA tournament. Six of those in the Women's College World Series. The famous shot to beat Tennessee in the championship series game one in 2013. The walk off to win it in extra innings. That was an epic pitcher's duel as well that night. Got another one cooking here. That was Ricketts versus Renfro. 1-0 from Osorio, ripped just foul down the left field line. Well, what makes Chamberlain great at the plate is her adjustments from at bat to at bat. She does not have one weak spot that she will consistently be. Her last at bat, she was thrown inside a pitch that she didn't agree with. She had to chase. She flew out. That's the same pitch she just crushed down the foul line right, right now. Doing her best to make sure that this is not her last college at bat. Yeah. 
Stays away from the rise ball. Two and one. sends it out to left field and it's gone and Oklahoma takes the lead on a home run off the change. And the question becomes how many times can you fool Lauren Chamberlain? She makes adjustments, she sees the ball, and this, one of the biggest home runs of her career on a changeup. This pitch, just a little bit too sweet. Just where Lauren likes it on that inside corner. Look at the way she loads. Little bit of a hesitation. Lets that changeup get deep and then just drives it down the left field line for a two-run home run to put Oklahoma on top. Will that be the 21st game winner of her career? Two to one OU here in the top of the fifth. Penley drops down the bunt. Safe at first. Second error of the inning on Alabama. When Lauren Chamber, Chamberlain homers, it's a good thing for the Sooners. And this is just where the throw comes. Runyon throws it a little bit up the line. You can see Demi Turner trying to get out of the way of the running penalty and just gets the ball off the tip of her glove. Rosario trying to collect herself. Lauren Chamberlain has two hits in the series. Both of them, two run home runs off of Osorio. And how big is Parsons getting on base so they have to throw to Chamberlain? That's the big key. They don't want to, but they have to when she gets on. Yeah, I agree, Justin. I know they scored that an error, but I love the way she kind of half chopped it. That ball hit the ground so many times. I don't think, even if Hayes would have fielded that cleanly, I don't think they would have had Parsons with her speed. She might be the unsung hero of this series because she has scored in front of Chamberlain on both of her home run balls. Aaron Miller, who has singled twice. The only hits prior to Chamberlain going deep. What a turnaround here in the top of the fifth after Bama had the momentum and the one run lead. And this is a big part of the game for Lexi Osorio. In game one, Everything fell apart after the two-run home run by Lauren Chamberlain. They put three more runs up on the board. They beat Alabama 5-2. to two. Right now, Lexi Osorio needs to get out of this. No outs in the inning. Stop any bleeding. It's a two-to-one game. There's plenty of opportunities left for Alabama to get back in this game. the suitors and nobody out they've got the Bama defense all turned around now well Danae Hayes the shortstop you can see as the bunt goes down she's looking to cover because Penley is taking off to second base it's always ball bag back up you got to field the ball first before you go to the bag OU fans now chanting Sooner Magic. The two-run home run by Lauren Chamberlain. And now Penley reaching on an error. The infield single for Aaron Miller, and it's Katie Self stepping in. She puts the bunt down. Osorio goes to first to get the out, but both Penley and Miller move over a bag.
and I love that. I think that's a great call to get runners up in the scoring position. Paige Parker's hit a lot of deep fly balls. Opportunity for a sacrifice fly with just one down. She's walked twice tonight, but Michelle, you go back to game one. She had the sack fly RBI that proved to be the game winner in the sixth inning. And they are going to walk her to load the bases to get the force out around the infield. And it will be the senior Georgia Casey with a chance to bust it open. Casey is 0 for 7 at the Super Regional. After she hit 714 at the regional last weekend. Their leader, who Patty Gasso calls the extension of me on the field. A four-year starter has been clutch in the postseason her entire career. Infield at double play depth for Alabama. And Casey really should have two RBIs this game. McClenny robbed her of her hit back in the first inning with the bases loaded. One over from Osorio. Rise ball out of the zone. Shelby Penley at third. Aaron Miller at second. Paige Perker at first. The pitcher has already been pinch run for, so they have to keep her in the game. Strike inside. Two and one. Two. Twice in the last three years, these Sooner seniors have been bounced from the tournament by Alabama. Trying to get one back in their final campaign. Casey pops it up. Runyon struggled with it. Runyon got tangled up with the base runner and couldn't locate it, and Hayes was right there beneath her. What a grab by Hayes. She just throws her arm out. Runyon had gotten caught up, misread it, but this is why you don't give up on a ball, and Hayes, what looked like an impossible catch after Runyon misses it, makes the grab. Third incredible defensive play for Bama. And with two outs, Tori Nershall is due up. But uh, Gasso and McKay checking their charts here. Warren Chamberlain, the two-run home run to give the Sooners the lead. Another confab for the OU hitters, and it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here coming up. Leah Wodak. Her big swing this year was a grand slam against Central Arkansas last weekend at the regional. The freshman will step in as the pinch hitter.
Just missed it low, 1-0. and oh. The frustration from both coaches about the strike zone. Fouls it straight back, one and one. One big inning was enough to win game one, five to two. Will one big inning here in the fifth and yeah, two-run inning has been big considering the pitching here at the Supers. Will it be enough in game three to extend the career of Lauren Chamberlain and Shelby Pendley in this senior class for Oklahoma? is loaded. The runner's on the move. Rodak fights one off. Thirtieth pitch of the inning coming from Lexi Osorio. Rodak pops it up, and that will drift into the screen and the. Crowd reacting, they did not see it hit the screen. They thought it was a clean catch by Bell. You gotta love all the umpires in the stands. I think they know the call. Good at bat here from the OU freshman. Fighting off some tough pitches. Another 3-2-1 coming. Wodak to Turner at second, down on a knee. Got it. Oklahoma leaves him loaded, but not before grabbing the lead. Lauren launches number 94 of her career, and it's got the Sooners on top. The series is just amazing. It is the atmosphere that you dream about. You walk in, and there's the fans all around. You see cameras, and you know that millions of people are watching you. There's an aura about Oklahoma City. There aren't words really to describe what the World Series means. Growing up playing softball, you always want to win a national championship. The best moments that I've had in my life, some of them are on that field. Yeah, you might have been dreaming about it since you were a little girl, but now it's a reality. Now we can make it happen. And the Women's College World Series is almost upon us. It'll get underway on May 28th, Thursday. Four games for you. On one side of the bracket, Michigan will be there. Oregon will also be there. The Wolverines awaiting the winner of our matchup here. And right now it's 2-1 to one Oklahoma over Alabama as we go to the bottom of the fifth. And a big development right here. Marissa Runyon, who is the top home run hitter for the Crimson Tide, has struggled mightily in the postseason. She is pulled right here for a pinch ritter, uh, hitter, Andrea Hawkins. 7, 8, and 9 are due up. 
This is a big move by the Tide. Runyon, their home run hitter, has carried them through most of the season. You mentioned she struggled, so you go for the short gamer, Hawkins. Figure maybe Pat Murphy's playing a hunch because uh, the numbers for Runyon in the postseason, not good. Also, if Hawkins can get on, now you got speed on the bases with the tying run. Junior out of Bay City, Texas. This is her first at bat of the series. And I think the other thing that's surprising is that he doesn't Runyon, who's a lefty, he doesn't put a righty in to get that righty lefty matchup against Page. It's now lefty lefty still for Page. Takes the 3-0 pitch. Alabama took the 1-0 lead in the bottom of the fourth. Oklahoma answers with two in the top of the fifth. That was Full ball count. four. that now a few times chasing the pitch that would get me on base went around strike three one down see she just waves at that pitch like it would have been a ball, but that bat place crosses the plane. Third strikeout for Paige Parker. This is Callie Case. The other two strikeouts for Paige, these next two hitters do up. to drop it down, mishandled by Parker. And Alabama, the tying run on base. The go ahead to the plate. So smart, even though this isn't a perfect bunt, it's a perfect place. Why? Parker, the lefty, has to come across her body. Such a difficult play for her to make, and that's why she gets the error. Official scorer is actually going to give her the base hit, but Next up is Danny Richard. We lay it down here with one out. Bottom of your lineup, I think yes, Danny Richard struck out her last at bat. I think you figure out a way to move her 60 feet. You know, one run game. Top of the order coming up, Turner and McClenney both have hits tonight. That would make Turner a huge at bat. Richard swings away, and they will not advance the runner. Two down. Top of the order, Demi Turner, one for two with a single. With Haley McClenney, the All-American on deck. from Parker. Missed it low, 2-0. Oh. can start to see Parker fatiguing as well, working from behind, just not the same snap, sharp break on the pitches. 
understandably so with the number of pitches she's thrown this weekend. Curved away from her in the strike zone, two and one. Two hundred and ninety pitches now for Paige Parker. Osorio is already over three hundred. And gets Turner to pop it up. Parsons with the catch, side retired to the sixth and a 2-1 OU lead. 2-1 Oklahoma with the lead over Alabama to the top of the sixth we go. How about the pick you up moment of the game brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car and it's the difference in the game. Lauren Chamberlain sitting back on a change up. Beautiful swing, beautiful drive showing why she is the best home run hitter in all of softball. That is one of the biggest of her career. Her 16th NCAA tournament home run of the 94 that she has hit. It has the Sooners in front. And after that uh, fifth inning, she is due up third, so she will get another opportunity, and perhaps Shelby Penley as well right behind her. Whitney Ellis to start things off. Putting more pressure on the D. Osorio to first, one down. Well, the NCAA lacrosse season comes to a close on Monday on ESPN2. Spend Memorial Day in Philadelphia with Denver taking on Maryland. The four and the six seeds making it to the final. It's the NCAA championship game Monday at 1 Eastern on ESPN2. Big upset for Denver over the top seed Notre Dame by a goal. It's a one-run game here in Tuscaloosa. Second game of the day for these two teams. Oklahoma won game one last night. Alabama won 2-0 this afternoon to force our decisive third game. Tide went up with, with an RBI single from Chauncey Bell in the fourth and then the home run from Chamberlain. Two hits in the series, both of them two run home runs. Gonna get another swing and hoping that she can get back to the Women's College World Series for the fourth time in her career. The heartbreaking loss to Alabama as a freshman and the thrill of the victory against Tennessee as a sophomore. And how about the most famous of her 94 career home runs? Game one of the championship series in extra innings. Sends it down the line and left. And the walk-off win in the 12th inning. Oklahoma would win game two the following night to win the national championship. And will she get another opportunity to shine at Hall of Fame Stadium? But first, a conversation about how they want to pitch to her. Or not, with two outs. Well, I think you have to because Shelby Penley already hit the ball over the fence, but Helen McClinney was there to pull it back in. So, <laughs> yeah, you have to be uh, cognizant of that. So, at this point in the game, you have to go at her again. Sydney Littlejohn loosening up for the first time. She came on to relieve you know, Osorio in the seventh inning last night. I think right now, Stefan Brakel, the reason she's calling timeout is, is just making sure, hey, when I call this pitch, this is what I mean. This is where it needs to be located. For example, the changeup that was hit out, she might say, I want it off the plate, not over the plate for a strike. For a freshman, sometimes you have to make that clear. Murphy is out of the dugout as well. That's Allie Habits, the other assistant coach there with Van Brakel. And now, after the discussion with the freshman pitcher, Pat Murphy out for a pitching change. 
And what a performance this weekend by the freshman, Lexi Osorio. And deservedly so, the standing O from the crowd. With the lead, a pitching change for Alabama. And let's go through a couple of theories as Osorio comes out of the game, guys, but she's back out in the bullpen throwing pitches. Well, she has some tape on her finger, so I wouldn't be surprised if she opened up a blister. But I think she went out to the pen just to what I call cool down. It's very important for pitchers to cool down after you pitch just to get some fresh blood through your muscles. She could still re-enter this game yeah. if needed. But it's really important to cool down after you've had a long day of pitching. Sydney Littlejohn came on in relief last night. The first batter she faced was Lauren Chamberlain, and she got her to pop up. And now here she is stepping in with two outs to face Chamberlain again. Last time up, she left the yard. Missed it away, 1-0. and Little John is the sophomore from Russ Texas. She's 16-1 and one on the season. Yeah. 1-0 nibbles the outside part of the plate, 1-1. Bell chasing away a giant moth that flew onto the field. A little house cleaning going on at the Rhodes house. Look at the bugs sticking around for the double header here. Chamberlain. That one went right at the head of her head coach, Patty Gasso. Quick reflexes. There's a reason why third base coaches are rarely inside the box. <laughs> Moved way back. Protects. started off the at bat they went away for a ball she came away again for the strike tries to come upstairs but it, it's a way that they keep on sticking with she keeps battling it off and then the home run pitch is a curveball it's not even a strike it's off the plate and she pulls it just showing you the length of Lauren Chamberlain's swing Well, we talked about it just a moment ago. They liked Little John to throw to Lauren Chamberlain. And 
Chamberlain wins the battle, and Alabama will go back to Osorio. So she has hit two home runs off of two different pitchers in her last two at-bats. I'm just impressed with the pitch she was able to hit. I mean, she's a pull hitter, but what she does is she gets around. You see that backside? You see her just fire up into her front side, getting around the ball and driving it out to left field. You, you always tell hitters to go with that pitch. Lauren Chamberlain, one of the few that can get away with pulling it with that much power. And now it's Penley with the 0-1 pitch. Lauren Chamberlain. Showing what she is capable of with three hits in the Super Regionals and three home runs. A huge assist for why Lauren Chamberlain has the amount of home runs that she does is because of Shelby Penley. The big question would be why throw to Lauren Chamberlain? Why let the best hitter beat you? Well, the best hitter is actually behind her, and that's why you throw to her. And years prior, it was Kaylani Ricketts, so she's always had strength following. Her. But I, I would think tonight, with Penley not hitting well in the series, I would have put her on and then took my chances with Penley. Now you go back to the same pitcher you had before. So interesting cat and mouse going on there. But Penley, as good as she's been this year, has not swung it well here. Well, and I do think that they were remembering that Penley had that ball out of the yard if it were not for Haley McClinney. So I, I think that's what forced their hand because of that earlier at bat. Rise ball out of the zone. Comes inside, ball four. And Aaron Miller will step in. She's three for three tonight. Crimson Tide had a one nothing lead. Then Lauren Chamberlain happened. A two run home run in the fifth, a solo home run in the sixth. Around the pitching change. 95 now in her storied career. And inching closer to a trip home to play for a second national championship. was telling us the other day the mindset of Lauren Chamberlain. You know, she arrived as a freshman. She was not the superstar. They had Kalani Ricketts. They had Jessica Schultz. They had one of the best teams in the country. And she said Lauren didn't hesitate. Jumped right in. Was a part of the team. Wanted to soak up as much information as she could get. Become a better player. Become a better teammate. And she has done all that. Well, that's what the best ball players in the world do. They continue to learn it no matter what level they're playing at. And that's what I'd love to see about Lauren Chamberlain is that she's progressed throughout her career. And you have to talk about the fact she was injured last year. If she wouldn't have been injured her junior year. She'd probably be yeah. well over 100 home runs. Pop up Turner. Loves it. Side retired, Alabama adds another, or excuse me, Oklahoma. Lauren Chamberlain showing off the explosiveness of her swing, driving it out to left field and proving yet again why she's the best home run hitter in softball.
The NCAA Softball Super Regionals is presented by Quicksilver from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, every day. And in part by the 306 horsepower Lexus GS. Experience it and there is no going back. Alabama with a couple more chances as we head to the top of the sixth, but that one run lead has disappeared. Lauren Chamberlain has happened tonight in Tuscaloosa. Two home runs to drive in all three for the Sooners. Yeah, Lauren Chamberlain is just so hard to pitch to. She's got so many weapons. She can hit the changeup. She can hit a rise ball, curve ball. You really can't make mistakes. Otherwise, she's going to drive it out of the park. I just love how composed she is in big moments. I think the bigger the stage, the more confident and relaxed she is. I mean, you can just tell. You can see in her mind she knows that she wants to put her team on her back. 95 career home runs. And tonight she has hit two off of two different pitchers. And now we go back to Alabama and Haley McClenney to lead off. Doubled and scored the only run for the Tide in the fourth and has had two spectacular plays out in center field to keep this close. Crimson Tide played for the national championship last year. They need a comeback if they're going to have a return performance. Remember, too, they they were trailing to Oklahoma three to nothing in the championship in 2012. And after a rain delay in which they were dancing and singing in the rain, they rallied to come back to beat the Sooners. The seniors here tonight for Alabama were freshmen on that team. Including Jaden Spencer, who is due up next. between Parker and Ellis. One, two, McClenney pops it up. Penley back on the grass, she'll give way to self. One down. Second time McClenny has popped out tonight. Jaden Spencer has been the other big bat for Alabama. So good, in fact, she was intentionally walked in the fourth to load the bases. And then right behind her, Chauncey Bell had her back with an RBI single. Five of the last seven outs have come via the fly ball, and I think that's when you feel the pressure for Alabama. They're chasing a little bit more up in the zone. Parker doing a nice job of executing that pitch up. Two and one the count. Over 300 pitches now for Paige Parker. In line to grab her second win of the Super Regionals and move on to play in her first College World Series. Spencer with a base hit. And Alabama will bring the tying run to the plate. She's been terrific for the Tide this weekend.
Penley had been playing all the righties in that 5-6 hole. She had been shading. She moves a little bit off and just enough. She had gotten to every ball hit there. Spencer finds a way through. That will pop up in the RBI single tonight. Parker misses high. One out of Bell. Well, this is the part of the lineup, the four righties in the row that really stress Paige Parker. That matchup can be so hard on lefty pitchers. Also creates a, a shift defensively. Watch Penley go back to her position, way over, especially after the hit that snuck through there. She's not going to let that happen again. Another three ball count to Bell. Take strike one. You know what the shift tells me, too, against these righties is that they have little confidence in Alabama being able to hit the ball up the middle. If Bell stays inside one. She's got a nice gap there. Bell's single was to center field. Pops it up. Penalty giving chase. Won't quite get there. She had a chance, though, on the shift, which she wouldn't have had had she been playing regular short. This is a player that was questionable as of yesterday if she could even play the game. She's been all over this field. Full count to Bell. Staying in it. That's big sis Chanda Bell, one of Kentucky's great pitchers, cheering little sis on. Got the camera out. Stays alive. She had the big hit to drive in there, run in the fourth. Looking for another one here in the sixth. Another 3-2 pitch coming from Parker. Ball four. Tying run on the bases. Leona Lafayette, a ground out to short, a fly out to center. The home teams in the Super Regional so far are 4-0. and oh, And Alabama's neighbors to the south, the Auburn Tigers are in. Their neighbors to the north, their SEC sisters, Tennessee, they're in. A lot on the line for the Tide. And they're down a couple to Oklahoma. The champions of the Big 12 Conference trying to stay in the chase for their third national championship. The winner here will face Michigan on Thursday on opening day at the World Series. Those other three teams do not yet have an opponent.
They have gone final in Westwood, game one of the Super Regional in Los Angeles, and UCLA has defeated Missouri 7-4. to four. And it's back to Paige Parker versus Leona Lafayette, the bottom of the order. Trying to get something cooking. Spencer with the single, Bell with the walk. And Lafayette gloved by Casey. Two down. I'm just surprised she's swinging on the first pitch after a walk to the previous batter. You know she's tired. You try to work her deep into counts. Offensively, that's got to come into your mind. Tied in the series are two for 17 with a runner in scoring position. Danae Hayes with two outs. Parker comes in with a first pitch strike. Well, it's interesting that Hayes shows bun. I'm not quite sure why she would, but I think the corners really didn't believe that she was going to put it down because they didn't even really charge in. <laughs> so there's two outs. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Oh, one from Parker. It hit her. Bases are loaded. Now, Marissa Runyon is due up. She has been ice cold in the postseason. She was pinch hit for in the fifth inning. And Pat Murphy will put the bat back in Runyon's hands here with the bases loaded. A spectacular regular season with 18 home runs. Parker worked out of a bases loaded jam in the bottom of the seventh to win the game last night. And she struck out Runyon to do it. And Runyon watches one right deep. A grand slam for Marissa Runyon. Puts the top. to get the third out. She would have four, five, six coming up. And all of a sudden, what was looking like the Sooners being three outs away from advancing, now it is the Crimson Tide three outs away. Oh for 13, no more. Her only hit of the series gives Alabama the lead with a grand slam. That 
it right after she had been pinch hit for the Capital One Cup impact performance. Hey, when you're taking batting practice and you're visualizing the moment, this is it. This is why you play the game. Marissa Runyon comes up so big with the grand slam to put her team ahead. And she has tied Charlotte Morgan with that swing for the single season RBI record. Struggling mightily in the postseason. Never lost her focus, never let herself get taken out of the game mentally, even though she had been pulled physically from an at-bat. And now they are three outs away from knocking out Oklahoma for the third time in four years. The Sooners will go with their four, five, and six hitters. And they will try and extend the careers of this spectacular senior class. McClenny, one down. The performance from her defensively in center field, saving four runs tonight. And the performance of the freshman pitcher, Osorio, throughout this tournament. Lauren Chamberlain, the career home run queen, along with the likes of Georgia Casey and Shelby Penley and Callie Parsons, the seniors in their lineup tonight. They have come back from a two-run deficit in game one. They were down here tonight and came back to take the lead. Can they do it a third time? One and one. Chamberlain and Penley, two of the top five home run hitters in the history of our sport. There's a ways to go though before either of those would be able to get to the plate again. Have to get all the way around to the top of the order and Osorio trying to prevent that from happening. Parker, who's also been terrific in the circle, her counterpart, down one and two. Osorio just finding enough in the tank to make that rise ball jump. She has been incredible tonight. And it is one of the seniors who will have a chance to keep it going. Georgia Casey looking for her first hit of the series. She's 0 for 3 tonight and was the victim of two terrific defensive plays. One by McClenney and one by Danae Hayes.
Marissa Runyon's Grand Slam. And the bottom of the sixth inning wins it. And the remarkable careers of those Oklahoma seniors, including Lauren Chamberlain, Shelby Penley, Georgia Casey, will come to a close despite two Chamberlain home runs on the night. And Alabama becomes the third SEC team to head to Oklahoma City. Alexia Astorio, just an amazing supers. So many innings. The freshman, outstanding. The defense and her offense behind her. You couldn't ask for a better performance of four years than this senior class, led by Chamberlain, led by Penley. Chamberlain, you couldn't ask for more than her hitting the two home runs, scoring the only runs for Oklahoma this game. Her career will come to a close with 95 home runs, and those seniors have the national championship from 2013, and they see their season end at the hands of the Crimson Tide for the third time. And Alabama is moving on. Their freshman pitcher, the remarkable defense from McClenney, and the Stone Cold Marissa Runyon heats up with one pitch for a grand slam to win it. We have our first matchup in Oklahoma City on Thursday, and it's a matchup of former national champs. Michigan in 2005, Alabama in 2012. The Wolverines beat the Tide twice during the regular season right here in Tuscaloosa. What a show at the Rhodes House. The three game Super Regional Series goes to the Crimson Tide. More supers coming your way tomorrow. Three more slots to fill. And we will see you in OKC on Thursday at noon Eastern on ESPN for the start of the World Series. Coming up next is baseball tonight. Thanks for joining us here in Tuscaloosa.